Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm sure you've seen by now the signs that you're financially stable even if you don't feel like you are. That was my last video on this topic. Today we're gonna talk about signs that you were not financially stable even if you feel like you are. And some of these things may shock you and that's exactly why we're gonna be talking about them. So we're gonna jump straight into number one. You don't know how much money you make per month after taxes and the reason this is the first thing on the list is purely because if you don't know how much money you're making after taxes then everything else that you're supposed to be basing your expenses off of is already off because that means you're basing it off of your gross income for instance if you make sixty thousand dollars a year you're basing your entire budget off of sixty thousand dollars a year even though after taxes, that might be something like $51,000 per year or even less. And to piggyback on that exact point, another sign that you're not financially stable is you don't know how much money you spend per month. There's an old phrase out there called know your numbers. That is a big sign that you're pretty financially literate and you understand your personal finances very well. But if you don't know the top two things, which is how much money you're making per month after taxes and how much money you spend per month. If you don't know those two off the top of your head, or at least if you can't pull up a device like your iPhone and see how much money you spent last month on a spreadsheet that you're keeping or something like that, then chances are you're not using your money wisely because you don't even know how much you're spending per month. And this point that I'm about to bring here really solidifies the first two this sign is one of the biggest ones, and this is the biggest pain to do, but I'm sorry to say you have to track your expenses. And so if you're not tracking your expenses, this makes these the deadly three on your finances. Because not only do you not know how much you're making realistically, you don't know how much you're spending, you're not tracking your expenses. So even if you had an idea of how much you were spending, so you can't even tell me what your biggest expense is and why it's your biggest expense. And I'm not saying this to pick on anyone, but you really have to look at your finances that way. And I know that tracking your expenses can be a pain. If you do it manually, it's a pain because it's, it's time consuming, especially if you don't do it on a weekly basis. It's very time consuming if you do it all at once. But then again, if you use a system that does it for you automatically, you might see that there's a bunch of errors in putting certain things in the wrong category. You might've went to the gas station to pump your car up real quick and then get a snack, but the system doesn't put that in the restaurant somehow. And I 100% empathize with that because it is a pain but if you don't do it how can you say that you're financially stable when you really don't even know where your biggest expenses are coming from like if if i told you hey you get 700 dollars back every single month if you just stop spending in this one area and you didn't even know what that area was like what would your reaction be and the reason i give you that very specific number is because a few months ago I was getting a lot of bonuses from work and I was getting paid from YouTube, my book and all these things. And I felt like I was making money to the point where I really didn't need to look at anything anymore or at least not as much. And so I didn't for like three months, I really wasn't looking at what I was spending because I knew that I was making a lot more than I was spending at the time. But when I really started to break down the numbers, I really wasn't making that much more than I was spending, only a little bit more than I was spending. And to add to that in a category as you useless as this sounds, I, I decided to spend on this category, eating out, specifically DoorDash. And I had spent $600, $700 per month on DoorDash. Prior to like 2023, I didn't even use DoorDash at all. And so it's not even a necessity. It's not something that I ever really used to begin with. And now here I am, spending an excessive amount of money on that when I could have been putting that exact same amount of money into investments and making my money grow on my sleep. So that's just a few months of my life. Now imagine you doing that for years and years and years and years and years. That's why the top three are a deadly combination for your finances, which leads me to number four. You either spend as much money as you make or you spend more money than you make. And I have a phrase for this maxing out your salary and even though this is self-explanatory obviously every dollar that goes in there's a dollar going out so many folks do this because they don't realize how much money they make per year and they don't have their expenses right in front of them so they know exactly what they're overspending on or at least what they can expect to spend every single month and they overall just don't know their numbers 
but then they're making a good enough salary at work to the point where they feel comfortable enough to pretty much buy whatever they want on a monthly basis without really feeling the after effects. And usually they don't feel the after effects as much is because most of your paychecks aren't even. Like even though you get paid the exact same amount of money on each paycheck, your bills don't fall evenly, typically speaking. For example, if you pay rent, usually rent's due on the first. So you might be hurting for a little bit on that first paycheck, but then bam, the second paycheck comes and then you feel like you have money again. But then by the end of that month, oh, I can't do this before I get paid. And then boom, you get paid again. And it, it, the cycle just continues. So with your money being laid out like that, you might not even feel like you're maxing out your salary, but I can promise you once you start to break the numbers down, and that's probably the number one skill you can have right now within your personal finances is learning how to break the numbers down. You will find that you're actually screwing yourself over time and time again without realizing it because it's disguised as something that is comfortable. And that's why you may feel financially stable, but you're really not in this case. And the crazy thing is, once you open your eyes to what I just said, you'll actually see sign number five, and that's you're living paycheck to paycheck or paycheck to credit card. And it's a very real thing, because the thing is, you don't have to be making a so-called low income to be living paycheck to paycheck or paycheck to credit card. You can be making six figures. You could be making a quarter million dollars a year and live paycheck to paycheck. There is a large percentage of people who make six figures right now who are living paycheck to paycheck. So don't let that fool you. Don't let the income part fool you. You can be doing very well as far as earning potential and income. But when it comes to what you do with that, that's what makes you financially unstable. But the reason I say once you open your eyes to what I just said would open you to this is because then you break the numbers down and say, oh man, I made $75,000 a year, but I spent $73,000 of it. I only saved $2,000. And when you look at it that way, and that's like being generous, a lot of times, there was no savings and it was just spending, spending, spending. And I know everybody that watches my channel, y'all work hard. We all work hard, we're all adults. So I'm not discrediting any of that. And I'm, and I'm definitely not telling you how to spend your money. But what I am saying is once you break the numbers down and say, holy crap, I'm living paycheck to paycheck or I'm living paycheck to credit card, you really come to that realization real quick once you break those numbers down. Which at this point, I have several episodes of my Wealth Journey series that shows you how I break my numbers down which you're free to watch at any given time. I'll link the playlist up here if you're interested and it's also in the description. But the comfortability and the car note that you have because you have the nice car with the new car smell, with the sunroof, all the bells and whistles added to it, the nice apartment, the nice house you just bought, the concerts you like to go to, all that's comfortable because you've done a lot of great things to earn the money that you've been getting. But the whole time you're not even realizing how your decisions are affecting your personal finances on such a small level that it's just unnoticeable enough for you to not take action, to change it because you're comfortable until you actually look and break down the number. Now I'm gonna switch gears on you. I'm gonna start going into some more in-depth stuff that people just don't think about, but this happens a lot and I've seen this a lot. Number six, you're relying on overtime to keep up with your bills. This is a silent killer and I have so many stories that back this up. I've seen it happen so many times. People of many ages, they range from the age 20 years old all the way to probably 55, 56, 57 years old. But a lot of jobs nowadays have this lovely thing called overtime. I think overtime can be great for both the business and for the employee if used properly. I've seen so many folks make about $48,000 as far as their take home pay for the year, but they are usually signing up for overtime. So that $48,000 per year that they take home ends up turning into something like $65,000 to $70,000 per year. And I've seen them go well into the six figures with it too. Like it can be a very nice lifestyle that they get from working that much overtime. But the thing that most people don't realize is overtime is only there until it's not because companies can decide at any given moment if the company isn't doing well or they need to make budget cuts the first thing they're going to cut is overtime and i've seen so many folks base their whole life off of overtime so instead of basing 
their bills off of that 48000 they were basing their bills off of the 70000 that they were earning from the overtime. And once overtime got cut, they got mad because they felt like the company was screwing them over. That ain't how it works. The way you want to base your life is off of the very first thing that I talked about in this video, and that's knowing how much money you make after taxes. Once you know that number, you base your entire budget off of that. And if you make extra money, you put that extra money away intelligently instead of basing future bills off of that. Because one thing about overtime, it's not guaranteed. Here's another sign you're not as financially stable as you think you are. You don't have over a month's worth of expenses saved up. I'm not saying this is the easiest thing to do, but after you've been working for a while, I do believe you should have something to show for it and something to fall back on if anything happens. Because if something happens with your job, let's say you lose your job or you get hurt, you're out of work for a little while. The thing is, you don't know how long certain things are going to last. Uh, I'll use the example of losing your job. So let's say you lose your job, you got laid off, whatever the case was. Either way you look at it, in order for you to not lose everything and have to start from complete scratch, it would be good to know that you have at least a month to get things figured out. And plus you'd probably have whatever the rest of that paycheck was getting paid out to you. So you have a little over that. But the thing is, once you apply to other jobs, depending on how much experience you have, it onboarding can take a while. It can take between two to six weeks. And depending on and depending on the company, it could take much longer than that. But there's nothing stable about living a really comfortable lifestyle. And then when something hits the fan, then when stuff hits the fan, now it's like, oh my God, what do I do? I don't have anything. This is unfair. And then blaming everybody else and, and everything else on your problems, that ain't gonna bring you no success in life. And so it's always good to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. At least one month's worth of expenses should be saved up in cash, liquid cash that you can grab at any given time that you need it. What's the point of having nice things if you end up losing everything because of a major inconvenience? That's the question you've got to ask yourself when it comes to financial stability. Because financial stability is more than just paying your bills now and buying what you want now. It's also having what you're going to need in the future or what you would hypothetically need in the future if something were to go down. That means you got all your bases covered and you're good to go. But on that same topic, another sign that you're not financially stable is you don't have your savings automated. So now you're leaving it up to your memory. And there's been many times I'm a saving minded person, but when I first got started out, there were many times where I planned on saving a certain amount of money, but I saved at the end. See, I was saving backwards. I was paying all my bills, paying for everything on my expenses list, and then I was saving what was left. No, that's completely backwards. You're supposed to save the amount of money you want to save first and then spend what you have left. That's how you're going to save the most amount of money possible. But the way I took the guesswork and the memory out of it was just having my bank account remember for me. We all talk about make your money work for you, you know, being a boss and this, that, and the third. Well, the way you make your money work for you, for starters, you got to tell your bank accounts where to put your money so your money goes where you want it to go when you want it to go there without you having to press a single button or lift a finger or even think about it anymore. That's the power behind it. But that is something that you can do when you're financially stable because you're not worried about too much money getting taken out because you won't have enough left because you've already done the math. You already know your numbers. You already know what you can and can't do, what you can and can't transfer from one account to another. Therefore, if you're not able to do this or if you're not comfortable to do this, mentally speaking, you are not financially stable. Now, with some time, you will get there. I would say if you're not familiar with that process yet, let's say your goal is to save $400, maybe start with automating $100, then $200 until you're comfortable and you know there's not going to be too much money taken out of your bank account to avoid things like overdraft fees and things like that. This is a big, big sign that you are not financially stable you're not investing at all. I'm talking, there's no 401k, there's no Roth IRA, there's no individual investing account, there's just no investing. You didn't wanna invest in your 401k at work because you felt like you can't save the amount of money that you wanna save or do what you wanna do with your money because a portion of it is going into a 401k that is a big mistake. Another big mistake is having a 401k, but then 
and having the money to invest elsewhere, but just choosing not to have a Roth IRA or not to invest individually. This is just my opinion. This isn't official legal financial advice, but if you watch any of my net worth videos, you'll see that my net worth, at least about $150,000 worth of my assets within my net worth are all in investments. And if my money hadn't been in those investments, my net worth would not be well into the six figures. As a matter of fact, I make six figures right now. And even if I saved 100% of my income and then added another $11,000 on top of it, I still would not have as much money as I do in my investments. The thing about investments is they grow very, very aggressively. They have that potential to do so at least if you invest in the right things and you do your research before. But I do have investing content that absolutely nobody watches, but it teaches you so much about investing to, to the point where you're not gonna be you know, guessing and not knowing what you're doing. It gives you a very good foundation in terms of investing. But if you look at everybody who is wealthy or rich, they all have some sort of investing, whether it's stocks, real estate, business. They have a strategy and they found what works for them. The thing about it is when you become financially stable, you now enter the realm of being able to invest on a consistent basis. And so if you're not investing at all, for one, you're not doing a habit that is gonna ensure your wealth long term. And two, you might not be looking at it from a big picture view in terms of what that money can really do for you in the future, because I'm sure you've heard like everyone else has heard, hey, just invest in the S&P 500. If you really wanna mitigate risk, you'll get a good 10% per year. You might hear 10% like, oh, that's nothing. I don't wanna put my money in there. I'll make my own 10%. And if that's you, I encourage you to look into compound interest and see what that really does for your money because as you can see a lot of money grow while you're just eating, sleeping, walking, doing whatever you do, just going about your normal day. That stuff is growing in the background, but if you feel like, oh, I'm just not gonna invest or if you're not able to invest, all of those are reasons why in my book, you are not financially stable if you're not doing that. And if you're not investing at all, you definitely don't have your investments automated. That's another thing I would say. If you are investing, don't leave it up to chance. Just don't, just the same way, like I said, with savings, don't leave it up to just your memory. Actually set up automation so you don't have to think about it and the investments are happening on an automatic basis. Just remember with certain investments, such as like a Roth IRA, it might send the money over to that account automatically, but more times than not, you'll actually have to log in and make the transaction happen yourself once the money has been transferred over. Pro tip. So here's a crazy sign that a lot of people don't realize, especially those who are easily impressed by what others have. Uh, this is a sign that you're not financially stable. You have a lot of things but you also have a lot of credit card debt. And this isn't to criticize or, or judge anybody for making these decisions. This is to say that you deserve to have nice things. So I'm not saying anything like that, but if you have a bunch of things, including a very nice car, including very nice TVs, top of the line, everything, you know, name brand everything, name brand shoes, name brand clothes, the best products you can think of, the best technology, the best phone, the best car, the best decor in your house or apartment or whatever the case is. At some point, you have to really ask yourself, is having all these nice things worth it if I have to pay on this interest rate that's literally eating me alive and making me have to pay just about double what I had to pay for all of these things in the first place, was it really worth it? Because that's not being financially stable. It's much more stable to get the nice things one at a time instead of just having a bunch of nice things that you're still paying on your credit card for from last year. Number 12, you have more liabilities than assets. If you don't know the difference, liabilities are what takes money away from you and assets are the things that add money to you and put money into your pocket. So the way that you calculate your net worth, for example, is gonna be assets minus your liabilities equals your net worth. And if your liabilities are greater than your assets, that means you have a negative net worth, which means you are not financially stable at this time. A lot of folks who have just graduated from college see this in real time because they might have $65,000 in student loan debt and maybe $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 of their name. 
no matter what, if they had 30,000 to their name in cash, they would still be having a negative net worth. So that's just an example, but you definitely wanna have a positive net worth in order to be financially stable. And even once you do have a positive net worth, you wanna aim to have at least a five figure net worth before you can actually feel comfortable. Number 13, you don't actively seek to improve your personal finances. You kinda of just feel like you're good already, like I made it, I'm comfortable, I'm doing good. And perhaps there's a time and place for that, like retirement, for example. But if you're still young, you're grinding, you're still trying to figure things out, you aren't making six figures yet, you haven't started investing, you don't know your numbers, like if that if that's you, you've got to put the Instagram and TikTok down and really buckle down and start looking at how you can improve your personal finances because there's ways you can do it. There's so many different ways and there's so many different phases within personal finances that if you don't start learning now, it's gonna be a bigger learning curve by the time you have a family and you have kids and you get married and, and all this good stuff. It's gonna be a bigger learning curve to have then and then you'll have less time to learn. Right now you have time, right now you have energy. My message to you would be, you gotta put the distractions down for a little bit and just learn, look at what you can read, look at what you can find on the internet. I do have a book. I do have over 300 videos on this YouTube channel. And of course, there's obviously more channels than just what I have up here. So whatever resonates with you and whatever makes the most sense to you, but I say that because why would you not take advantage of learning how to improve something that is very, very important, a very important part of your life and your family's life. Why would you not do that? Number 14, you don't show up to work every day. You feel like, you know what? Uh, don't wanna go to work today. That is teaching yourself inconsistency. When you wake up and you're like, uh, I'm just not feeling it, I'm gonna call out, or you're not even sick. Like, you don't even have anything wrong with you. You just straight up don't wanna show up. Maybe you couldn't get along with a certain coworker, or maybe something happened at work that you didn't like the other day, or maybe you're just starting to hate your job or whatever the case is. And I can empathize with those things because I've been through that before. And I actually worked at a job that I hated, that I worked seven days a week, 12 hour days for. But the thing is, I never missed work and I was always there every step of the way, every single day. And I collected every single one of my paychecks in full because of that, because you don't get paid if you don't show up to work. If your salary is different, but obviously you can only miss so many days as a salary person before you're bowed out. You know what bowed out means, but you see what I'm saying? You you got to show yourself some some consistency. And so when you when you truck through and grind through the things that you hate and things that you don't feel like doing, you're showing yourself the utmost respect and self-love because you're making sure that you're coming through for yourself. If you can actually pull through for yourself, you can pull through for anybody who needs your help as well. But if you fail to pull through for yourself, you're gonna let other people down too. There's nothing stable about sporadically coming to work just when you feel like it, then get surprised when your paycheck comes up short, then the, the ironic thing is you end up having to show up to work more just to make up for the fact that you weren't there last week as much as you should have been, just to pay your bills. That's stressful. And then you really don't feel like going to work then, but you have to. That's the exhausting part, knowing that you have to show up or bills won't get about paid. 15, you feel more validated by what you have physically than what you have in your bank account. This is so true in terms of what I've seen in my life, what I've seen in high school, college. It's mainly the younger people, but even like in the work world, feeling more validated by the car you're driving in and looking at the people look at you and all this stuff, Then, but then look in your bank account and you don't even have five figures in it, but then you don't even have but then you don't even have $1,000 to your name, $2,000, $3,000 to your name. That is madness. It really is, because such a nice car. What's the point of having that car if a $1,000, $2,000 emergency would take you out, you know? Like, if something happened to that car and you don't have the money to fix it, What's the point in having the car? What's the point in being validated by having a nice car that people are awing at and drooling over if you can't even take care of the car? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. Which brings me to this point. You care about what other people think. And I'll just leave it at that because this comes full circle from one all the way to number 16. You care so much about what other people think that you forget and you neglect to look at yourself and you forget to look at how much money you make 
after taxes. You care about what people think, so you say what you make prior to taxes, but you don't even know what you make after tax. Therefore, you don't know your numbers, you don't know what your expenses are, you don't keep track of the stuff you're supposed to keep track of. You end up maxing out your salary anyway by getting all the nice things and you start feeling comfortable. You don't automate the things that you're supposed to automate like your savings. Don't show up to work every day because you'd rather relax or take time off because you need a break. And through all of these habits and through all of these things that you know you could be potentially doing, this puts you in a state of feeling comfortable, but not actually being financially stable. You feel comfortable financially, but you're really not going anywhere. Like you're running in place basically, but this can be reversed. You can fix this. All you have to do is the opposite of every single thing I told you not to do in this video. And with each point I gave in this video, I did give a solution. So make sure you check that out, but also make sure you check out the signs that you are financially stable even if you don't feel like it because believe it or not there's a lot of people who are financially stable who feel like they're not it's the craziest thing anyways i digress my name is reggie bryant that is a video for today thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video